Hey guys, we're back playing Ogre Battle, and I'm about to do something that I particularly don't want to do. And let's go into Calbi. As you'll notice, we have Alamut here, which is, this is the Empire. This is the gateway to the Empire, right? Every stage that is unlocked by defeating this one, and subsequent stages, will be part of the Empire. But there's still a few more that we have to do, well, while we don't have to do, we should do. And we're going to start with Calbi. Now the problem with a high alignment game is that you are going to be completely over leveled unless you just leave people, you know, completely out of fighting, like, at all. Uh, alright, there's Tristan, so... That's the super unit, alright. Um, I need Saradin to sit... And I need Warren to go sit right here. Now the reason is I'm using the two uh, murder units, as I call them. Also, oh, you notice Warren has a different character sprite. Warren is a lich. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last episode, or I might have mentioned that I was going to do this in the last episode. Because I went to uh, Milano, and then to the actual city of Milano, and they gave me a, a, a lexicon, which is the Book of the Dead. We took that back to Sharam District, I think the, the second stage of the game, where the magician Batista, not Batista, uh, bought it from us by trading us an undead ring, which turns a sorcerer into a lich. It also turns a a Tiamat into a zombie dragon, which I believe is at this... If you have any sorcerers in your army, doing that is ultimately pointless. Alright, uh, look, let's look at the unit listing here. Yeah, 13. Unless you have somebody that's like 11. I gotta try to intercept these people. Just have Warren do some mop up here. There's nothing in here we haven't seen. Obviously, there's no new unit types because... Oh my god, no. Yeah. I'll use this, I guess. Ugh. The one thing that I'm going to have problems with during this stage is these guys getting rid of those undead. There aren't many. I think this is the only unit that actually has them. But they are, they do exist, and that's not cool. Yeah, it's during the day, so they're not going to do as much damage, but that's still more than enough to take care of these guys. Look, one round. They didn't even need Warren's three spells. Liches are amazing because they do the same thing a mage does, but three times per battle, which is ri obscenely ridiculous. As in, Warren probably doesn't need either of those mages now. Like, they could all go somewhere else. Look, there's... And also, I need to try to keep the cleric units away from uh, Saradin because he has skeletons in his unit. So, yeah. Uh, this episode is going to be fairly short, as I'm not going to bore you with, you know, my two units here destroying inconsequential enemies like these. Just try to show off as many what you'll actually be facing. If you, I mean, if you watch this Let's Play in the future, and you wanted to come here, you know, at the time, then by all means, go ahead. I probably should go back to the episode that I finished off Diaspora and put a annotation link to this episode to say, in case you just want to, you know, skip, or not skip this stage and do it now. But, I mean, this isn't a real good walkthrough of that stage, because... Uh, Warren is obviously far too powerful to deal with, you know, far too, much, far too strong to adequately show the strength level of the enemies here because of how absolutely obscenely strong he is. Look, they, they killed that uh, wild man before he even got to attack. At least I think he did. I wasn't really paying much attention. Pretty sure the two wyverns got to go, though. 
Now what they do... Ugh, angels. This is actually the first stage where you, you can discover an angel. God, damn it, they're gonna get by. Uh, there are two enemies come out of the, the base in two ways. They come out the way Warren was coming in, which is over the mountains. That's generally mountain units like the ones with the golem, the, go the clerics with the golems, or, you know, units that fly, like the eagle man and the hawk man, and the other unit with... Uh, the two, the wild man and the two, what are they, wyverns or worms, whatever. And then the rest of them, the snow units, like the dragoners and the dragon and, you know, the beastmen, they all come over. So look, I have to have, I, I have to keep tabs on Warren because he's got to go up and deal with I try to deal with most of the units, at least the cleric ones that try to fly, you know, past. Try to fly up towards uh, Saradin. Honestly, uh, if I had prepared a little better, I would have taken Saradin's undead units out of his unit and put in, like, just any two. Okay. Yeah, you can hit Saradin can handle that one. But yeah, so that's basically all this episode is going to contain, is them just destroying... Let's show off a battle with Saradin, but them just destroying this army. This will not take long. It won't... Look at that damage, man. That's during the... well, I guess it's dusk, but... The sad thing about it is that... Because I can't liberate any kind of towns, neither one of these guys will actually be standing on a town to recover their health, so I have to watch them carefully. <laughs> the devil leveled up. Wow, that's impressive. Let's see if he can class change now. 19? No? Uh, they get their last class change fairly late. Of like 20 or so. Actually, I think all the... Oh, son of a... Uh, weak. Should go after that guy. There we go. Now, they can take this because of... Uh, the fact that the griffin himself, or the cockatrice, has a white magic weapon. But if there's an, a unit with more than two, they're screwed. They have to, you know, like... Oh, crap. Okay, yes, yeah, good, they can get rid of it. Alright. Uh, Saradin's unit should be able to take it as well. Because one of his, uh... Skeletons also has a white magic weapon. It's the cleric unit and the angel that I'm worried about. And I'm waiting... Okay, the angel's coming out this way. Or that angel, anyway. Alright, so let's show off the angel unit. And then we'll call it a video. Um, this is probably one of the... Uh... Oh, I do have, I have an Empress card. It's awesome. Alright, this is probably one of the most... Uh, if you were playing the stage legit, this would be one of the most worrisome units you'd have to deal with. Because at this point in the game, ninjas are a pain in the ass. Because they're level, you know, 10 to 11, right? Your units at that point, you know, level 10 or 11, don't have the ability to attack a third time in the front row. Ninjas do. Okay, you gotta go up there and get this guy. That's your one job, Warren, is to get rid of the clerics. Uh, the angel, I can deal with. I mean, he, you know, they might kill one of the guys, because they can only cast Banish once when they're in their first form. But... You know, so it, it's when they're in the second form that I have to worry about them. And I don't think... They might... I, d I doubt they're cherubims, which are the second angel form. Alright, gotta get rid of that. We can get back down there now. Well, they, oh yeah, ninjas. Uh, and then, you know, 
until you get to level 15 or 16 when, you know, your knights start to become paladins, your samurai start to become masters, that's when you can actually equal them in hits per battle. So, like, at, in the mid-stages of the game, when enemies start doing, you know, decent amounts of damage with every attack, having a unit that gets auto, you know, three attacks per battle is pretty broken. But alright, um... I'm gonna stop this now and take care of the rest of these guys, and next time we will actually deal with finishing off the stage and liberating all the crap. So, thank you guys so much for watching, thanks for all your support, and have a good night.